John and Patricia Gallagher know what happy times look like. They lived in a great neighborhood, in a lovely home. They had a happy marriage, a dog that looked like Lassie, and four beautiful children. Robin, Caitlin, Kristen, and Ryan. But when their family was ravaged by depression, they didn't know where to turn or how to cope. Many lessons were learned the hard way. They have created this recording as a family to help others deal with difficult situations. Back when life was grand before depression came into their lives, the Gallagher family was featured twice on The Oprah Winfrey Show on a segment about raising happy kids on a reasonable budget. Patricia Gallagher had written a book by that title, and Oprah's team came out and filmed a segment at their home in Pennsylvania. It looked so perfect back then, John Gallagher playing ball with his kids in the yard, kids doing their chores, a happy family at mealtime. But the Gallagher's lives were shattered just a few years after that appearance on The Oprah Show. John Gallagher was plunged into despair when his employer threatened layoffs. He couldn't sleep, didn't eat, he became withdrawn. The rest of the family knew something was wrong, but didn't know what to do. Things got worse and worse, and when John attempted suicide, the family was torpedoed emotionally and financially. Desperate to keep up appearances and ashamed of what had happened, they created a web of lies to cover up what really happened to John. Now, nine years later, the Gallagher family has begun to tell their story and have found healing and peace in the process. They want to help other families in difficult situations, whether it is a parent struggling with depression, addiction, alcoholism, or a chronic illness, the ripple effect devastates each member of the family. Dr. Dan Gottlieb, the host of the public radio program, Voices in the Family, had this to say about the Gallaghers. I've been doing this show for 22 years, and I cannot remember being so touched by a family story. Your daughters are beautiful inside and out. Thank you for trusting me with your story. April 28, 1999, 7 a.m. Patricia Gallagher woke up and was aware that she was not sleeping on her side of the bed. Before she had a chance to wonder if her husband John had left for work, she noticed him standing near the side of the bed. She thought that she must have been sleeping through the sounds of John's shower running and the hairdryer blowing, the noises that always roused her from a deep sleep. She glanced up sleepily and thought to herself, John, did you go to work? He looked somber and weak. It had been a rough few months. Something was terribly wrong. Stress seemed to have overtaken him these past few weeks, and Patricia feared that all of this whirling in John's mind and the recent confusing days, weeks, and months in their home were now twisting her mind as well. Was she imagining the fear, the distant, unfamiliar look on his face? Was he really looking down at her like a lost little boy? She didn't know what to do. John hadn't been himself for many months. Why was he looking at her in such a confused way? But before she could even ask him another question, he said, I tried to kill myself. This is Patricia Gallagher's story. About 13 months before the tragedy, my husband had come home from work with tears in his eyes. He sat next to me on our bed. With his head bent down, he sadly said, I have three to six months to find another job. My wife came into the room uh, and, you know, tried to comfort me, comfort me with, with the pictures of the way life used to be. And again, it did have an opposite effect on me because I thought to myself that I'll never be able to relive uh, those times again. And uh, I think uh, when everything just kind of took a toll on me, all of the sleeplessness, um, the worry, the anxiety, uh, the chemical imbalance, the uh, ability uh, or the inability to function uh, on a daily basis, uh, all those things filled up in me and I, I just couldn't take life any longer. What did you do? Um, 
I then asked my wife to go uh, to ask her mo mother to bring me some clothes. She left the room, and I saw that the window was ajar, and I, I didn't think of any, anybody in the family. Uh, I just thought that I couldn't take life any longer, and I hurled myself out the window. I'm really, I really feel good. I really feel good. I feel like we just told our story, and you know, hopefully this helps other people. Are you breathing? Are you continuing to breathe? I'm They're breathing. Fairly yes. deeply, you're getting yes. enough oxygen in I there. Am. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, I feel good. I, uh, I never thought I would see my sister crying over this because she's always isolated herself. So, it's it's nice to see some emotion run through, um, and I hope that we can help people who are listening out there too. John survived, miraculously. He was given a second chance. I pray now that we can find the meaning in this and use our experience to help others. God saved his life. I am looking for answers in his mysterious ways. I am looking for the hand of God to direct us. Right before my husband went in for a second operation, my mother gave him a card. And it read, I said to the man that stood at the gate, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he said, Go out into the darkness and put thine hand into the hand of God. This will be to thee better than a light and safer than a known way. The experience we have had reiterates this simple advice. My entire family has suffered, but we're coming back again with a life that is new. And yet we know that it is not a fairy tale. 